we're basically an annuals production of vegetables. Uh, we've got an acre and a half, about 1.5 to 1.6 uh, acres in annual production. Uh, with our blueberries, blackberries, some of the perennials, we have about a quarter acre. Um, so really in growable area, we're you know, only working with a one and three quarter acres. Our site uh, all together is you know, about three and a half. Um, so if you take the two greenhouses out, which are for microgreen production, we're looking at an acre and a half for vegetables and a quarter acre for fruit. Um, but combined with microgreens, you know, vegetable production, we are grossing around $200,000 on really, you know, less than two acres of, of production, which we're pretty proud of. What I got most excited about was the environmental side of it, the friendliness and the, the fact that, uh, you know, I've been having a concern the whole time about how much we're tilling. It's a tempting thing. We tend to overuse it. The soil looks so beautiful after you run the tiller through there and it's a nice clean bed to, to plant in, but we know at the same time we're doing a lot of destruction to the soil. So. Moving away from that into a no-till is something that um, got excited about. Um, but then I got a little anxious that we were probably going to have to allow the fields to lie fallow a little bit more. Cover crops are going to take it up. So the anxieties became, you know, are we going to lose money on this? You know, is it going to mean that we will be taking a third of our fields out of production a whole lot of the time? And, and what kind of cost consequence? And can we afford to do that? You know. What keeps me awake at night the most is that uh, fear that we haven't used the right mix in the cover crop for a no-till system, that uh, we have too many varieties in there now and that we didn't do the research that we probably should have before we put in our cover crops. And as a result, um, we're gonna have a lot of frustration maybe in this first year as we go into it. I mean, the frustration can come from the fact that uh, some of the varieties of, cover, of, of, of plants we have in the cover uh, may regrow, may not be killed with the crimper, may not be thick enough to suppress the weed uh, competition that we're hoping to achieve. So it's, it's that fear of the unknown that uh, scares me the most and that, um, you know, it, it, in, instead of being a real positive sort of transition, it becomes a real frustration and, you know, morale drops. It, it's, it's, a, it's a little, a good bit to lose sleep over. And, you know, we mentioned the cover crop stuff. One variety of cover crop may be ready to roll down on X date. The next is ready to roll down on Y date. So you have the potential that something actually reseeds itself. We rolled it down too far into the process or we do it too early. We may catch one, but not the other. So, like I said, you know, we're already having a winter die off of one of the fields of cover crop. Maybe the clover will come in and take up that gap, but weeds might as well. So we're already thinking, well, okay, we'll buy hay or straw to cover that up. Maybe that'll work. Um, but you know, you're right. If it, no one likes failure and, and the anticipation that it might fail, you know, you lose sleep over just as much as, you know, the anticipation of, you know, that it may be good. Um, I've know. been reading that book, uh, the one from Rodale. Who's that by? Uh, Jeff Moyer. Jeff Moyer. Um, and it's a little frustrating. I went through and finally looked at it and, you know, he's talking about a very limited application for it. And our application is gonna be much, much broader. I mean, we looked at it and they're growing one cash crop a year out of it. You know, our fields right now are producing three to four different varieties and cash crops on a year round basis. And uh, again, it's the economics of it. We're struggling right now to create the cash flow necessary to keep the people involved that we have. So um, any loss in that is a real basis for losing sleep at night. Uh, and so we'll see. It's not like we're particularly cash flow positive right now, too. So yeah. the anticipation that we, yeah. it may go the other direction when we're already facing you know, financial yeah. you know, situations, it's tough. And we also granted part of the funds for the implements are federally funded. We still have to pay for a third of it. Yeah. That's a lot of cash up front yeah. that we, we wouldn't yeah. have, have done otherwise. Yeah. yeah, we're getting a precision seeder and planter that you know, we may plant more accurately, spacing's better less time spent weeding and thinning Hopefully you know we may get you know yeah. we may get more crop yield per bed than we did previously but you're still your front end cost is pretty high you yep. can anticipate you know maybe it'll produce more but you're still looking at thousands of dollars with implements that we otherwise might not have gotten we could go with a couple hundred dollar push seeder you know that we're walking behind we're if, only farming a small area yeah, we can well, still do hand implements 
I, you know, the, the opposite side of it, the Pollyanna side, the bright side that I look at when I'm losing sleep over it is even if it causes us, us or in order to be successful with the no-till program, we have to use the fields maybe less as cash crops, that there may be a much greater efficiency in the time and man hours that go into each crop. And as a result, we're looking at trying to find some additional acreage so that we can maybe grow more net produce um, with less man hours involved. And hopefully there's some benefits to that. We have access to some other fields that aren't as close to where we are, but the only way we could do them is to have a system that uh, would require less attention, less man hours, and less intense labor than what we have right now. And, and that's what we're hoping to get out of the no-till is a, a much more efficient and less intense, less man hour intensive uh, production system.